Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome back to Sober Sunday, Sober Conversations with me, uh, Simon Bevy. It's been a while. We were on break uh, for a few weeks, uh, but we're glad to be back. So I want to invite each and every one of you. Uh, I'd like also to invite you to invite your friends, the regulars and the not so regular. Uh, let someone know that we are on. Uh, so you may host a watch party and invite some of your friends and suspecting, uh, you know, uh, relatives. Um, uh, but let people come in. We are starting a series of very exciting, real conversations about when life happens, when life happens, uh, because life does happen. And many times it, you know, with no announcement uh, to prepare us. Uh, and so we're glad just to be able to hang out and talk about these real issues and even share with the panel some of our personal challenge, uh, you know, uh, disappointments and issues that we have faced, uh, but also encourage each other. So again, happy new month, uh, happy September. Uh, the year is uh, quickly coming to a close, but uh, yeah, we still have a lot to do and God still has us. Uh, so I'm very excited about the conversation today, uh, dealing with disappointment, when life happens, dealing with disappointment. Um, and I uh, have a few friends here who don't look disappointed, uh, but I'm sure they have gone through disappointment in one way or another. Uh, let me start with um, the only lady today. We have uh, uh, three men, gentlemen, and one lady. So let me start with the lady. Uh, Pastor Mweni, it's uh, good to have you. Welcome. It's your first time, but uh, certainly not going to be the last time. So uh, you're welcome to introduce yourself, uh, say what you need to say about who you are and what you do uh, before we jump into it. Thank you very much, Pastor S. It's good to be here. It's an honor to be here um, tonight. Uh, my name is Mweni. As you've said, Pastor Mweni, I am a grief therapist and an authenticity coach. What does that all mean? It means that I help people navigate changes and challenges of life in a manner that is true to their reality, in a manner mm. that protects their dignity because some of our changes and challenges strip us off something and also in a manner that honors God. So because ultimately mm. our, our journeys come back to him. I believe that in the course of our journeys, we may feel like we may not see it, we may not feel it, we may not even, it may look like the plan has been thwarted, but the plan mm. of God in our lives is never thwarted. And so I help us navigate like, with that bearing in mind. Okay. okay. Excellent. Authenticity coach. I think it's the first time I, uh, I had, I mean, the first time I ever had someone call themselves that was with you. Uh, so welcome, glad, glad to, so you can be sure this is going to be both sober and authentic uh, for those of you who have joined us. And then uh, we have John Wales and Joroge. Uh, let me come to you as well. Uh, please uh, introduce yourself. Uh, tell us, um, I, I can't remember whether, whether uh, there's some things I can't remember about you. So tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is John uh, Wills Njoroge um, and uh, what I do, um, I work with uh, young people, uh, mainly mental health uh, interventions and uh, social diagnostics, uh, mainly assisting uh, individuals and institutions uh, come up with effective, way to, effective ways um, to intervene in matters uh, uh, mental health and also masculinity, that is mentoring boys. Uh, and in that, I would say I have also learned a lot uh, from uh, Simon um, a, for, for quite a number of years. And just to, to acknowledge that having also worked with him uh, several. Yeah, thank you. Well, thanks, John Wills. Uh, good to see you here. And um, we have uh, Mwenyeji. Uh, himself, uh, Pastor Iwagata, the youth, the youth guy. Uh, yeah, and you look like you are somewhere else, but uh, I'll not say much. So welcome. We're glad to have you here. 
Yes, I'm here at the tented camps in Masai Mara. <laughs> <laughs> we see no lion, brother. brand <laughs> Masai <laughs> Yes. Uh, <laughs> after hearing those introductions, I wanted to introduce myself, you know, as a as an eternity coach. Uh, mm. an eternity coach. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to get to heaven. And, uh, and I work with young people in a ministry called Y Hub Networks and also serve as a children and youth pastor at uh, Rock Assembly's Papa Center. Yes. Nihayo tu, uh, eternity coach, eternity coach, if you forget everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, good to have you, sir. You can coach us a little bit about dealing with eternity as, uh, as we get to this uh, disappointment. But I must say, I have had a good day this afternoon. We were graduating some men who have been going through money mm -hmm. enough, about 100. Uh, it was just amazing for me to listen to the stories, especially from... Uh, their close relatives, just what they have seen the men go through. And uh, for those of you who may be new to Sober Sunday, um, I'm with an organization called Transform Nations, and we do different programs. And one of that is uh, Man Enough, which is for men, a journey with men around positive masculinity. Um, and it's been amazing today to see those 100 men uh, graduate and see those families um, happy and celebrate them. So it's been a great day um, and a good beginning uh, of the month. And those of you who are joining us as we get to uh, the topic of the day, we want to ask you, please um, don't be quiet. Let us know uh, what experiences you've had, uh, how what we are sharing here relates to you or with you. Uh, we would love to hear from you. So uh, please feel free to write on our walls and let us know uh, how you're connecting with this and where you're come, you are connecting with us from. Uh, but we want to jump right into it. Um, uh, let me start with um, the authenticity coach. Uh, uh, let me ask you, disappointment, how does it find us? Uh, is it something we choose to uh, to do or to experience, or is it something that just uh, finds us and we have to live with it? Uh, disappointment, and um, uh, how would you explain to someone uh, what disappointment is about? Well, first of all, let me begin by saying that if it was something we chose to do, very few of us would make that choice. Mm -hmm. Oh, disappointment come my way. <laughs> Nobody really would look for it. Yeah. But mm -hmm. so it, it's in the course of your life, we are doing life as we know it in the business of our life. And something happens, you are expecting something and it does mm -hmm. not come to pass. So your heart feels disappointed. Disappointment is a feeling of being let down that the, what you had hoped for did not come. And disappointment is a part of life. It's actually, mm -hmm. it's a normal part of life. What uh, many of us struggle with are the emotions that arise as a result of disappointment. And okay. that is what we need to be able to learn how to navigate the emotions mm. that arise. Yeah, excellent. And we're gonna get into the emotions. Uh, but uh, John Wills, I know there are simple things that disappoint us like, chatting someone and they blue trick you and they don't respond. Um, I know I'm guilty sometimes of that sometimes and I'm trying to think of what once or three days I've gone. Uh, <laughs> but I'm actually still thinking what I'm going to say. <laughs> we do that as men. Now, Agatha, don't look at me as if that never happens to you. Uh, but uh, uh, those are simple disappointments. So, or you wanted to eat a certain meal and you find someone else at home has prepared a different one. Uh, there are those disappointments, but they're, they're more serious disappointments. And maybe as you have dealt with different people, uh, young and old, uh, what are some of the common disappointments um, that uh, you have come across? Uh, I, I think uh, as, uh, as, as Moeni said, uh, when it comes to an expectation, unmet expectations, and this can be uh, like what you said. That sounded like that sounds, sounded like a confession. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, 
and uh, also guilty uh, on the same. But disappointments um, we have um, uh, from uh, from families, uh, family members. Uh, there can be disappointments um, at uh, at the workplace. And mm -hmm. there can also be disappointments when uh, when you place a request and it is not met. Um, mm -hmm. Like maybe you're in a matatu, then you tell the conductor, hey, nashuki abale. then he sees a cop, he decides, nashuka. so he proceeds. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to walk back to where you are you are going. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so disappointments, they, they happen. Or maybe you're driving, uh, then... You are there and you have decided to meditate as you drive, then someone just cuts you in front uh, and mm. you're, disappointment. Uh, you're disappointed or maybe you're in traffic. Um, and uh, there's a guy who has decided to overlap. And so you'll be stuck there like uh, those guys in Ivasha uh, yeah. for, for, for two days. For so, hours, yeah. Yeah, so uh, they, they happen all the time. And I don't think there is a single person who can go uh, who can go through uh, the whole day without any form of disappointment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the magnitude now that matters. Mm. Uh, ex excellent. And um, uh, I work, you, you work a lot with people in church who are thinking about eternity. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, we're still in this world and we get uh, disappointed a lot. Uh, like, mm. for example, I mean, uh, I was in politics um, this, this last season. Uh, mm -hmm. I was majorly disappointed by some things I saw, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some of the things that were happening that were not supposed to happen. Uh, yeah. People buying off uh, ID cards so that my uh, friends who are supporting me don't vote, uh, mm -hmm. don't vote for my candidate. I mean, uh, I was disappointed. I remember for two days, I didn't even want to think anything about <laughs> Uh, about Makueni, I just I just wanted to stay away from it. Um, I felt let down. I felt like I've put my heart into this. All I wanted is to see a good leader for our people, uh, yeah. but other people are frustrated that. Uh, I think that's a real big one in our nation today, right? Yeah, that's a huge one. Especially Salia, what I'm going to be ground what we're going to do. And then you realize that you want to say my show ground. See your constituency. And the frustration of losing, losing so yeah. much. Uh, yeah. Because you spend you spend your time, you step out of your regular work duties if you're running, I mean, if you're working in a place, you resign to just go and try and be a leader to your people. And then mm -hmm. you discover Nobody's interested in a good leader. They just want somebody mm -hmm. who will give them a coin here, a coin there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think with, the, what, with what happened in 2020 with COVID-19 checking in and all, and the frustration that people went through in, in just wondering where is God in all this. And I think mm -hmm. one of the biggest disappointments that people face is when you want God to check in on something. You know, you have a sick baby or, you know, you're going through a hard financial patch. Uh, you've prayed your heart out. You know God is with you. And sometimes, especially when, because sometimes as pastors, we, you know, we, we want to, to, to give you hope, even when we know things are desperate. And we tell you, you know what, God is going to come through at this time next week. This time mm. next week arrives now. <laughs> things are still the same. Or the person passes away. Mm. And it, it can be shattering because... You know, you, you expect that, you know, the eternal God will definitely come through. And, and things just don't go the same way that you expected. The resources that were needed don't come through. The people who said they will come around you don't come around. And so we get frustrated with God. We get disappointed with God. We get disappointed with the community of faith. I've had so many guys say, you know, when, when I was going through this, you know, it's, it's the, the drunkard neighbors who came and supported me. And the church just, you know, sent a word of... Mm -hmm. uh, we are praying with you. We are together with you in spirit. <laughs> and people get disappointed because the community they expect to be part of them does not check mm -hmm. in. And so a lot of people fight with God over that and fight with the church as a representative of uh, mm -hmm. God. And, you know, fight with themselves because now you're beginning to say, is God really there? After mm -hmm. all these years of serving him, is God really there? And mm -hmm. it can be a huge, huge disappointment. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. That's true. I mean, we can get disappointed with God because we expected him to do something. I've met people who say, 
uh, I don't know that I can trust God anymore. I mean, he was supposed to come through. And his word says as much. And I waited and, and, and he didn't show up. Um, and I know that that's, that's not as uh, simple as we put it, and we're going to come back to it uh, a little later, but also with the church and with family and with people who are close to you. Uh, but Moeni, I think sometimes we get disappointed with ourselves. Uh, I find people beat themselves a lot and say, you know, uh, I don't know, and they call themselves names, idiot, and other names, um, because they just feel like, how could I do that? How could I mess up this way? How could I allow myself to go this way? Uh, I'm sure in your journey, you have met a lot of people like that. And uh, I find sometimes, I mean, uh, um, it's mainly because um, uh, I think ladies are a lot more aware uh, emotionally, uh, but I find ladies beat themselves a lot more than men. Men sometimes do very uh, stupid things, but they don't feel nothing about what they did. Uh, but I find ladies sometimes, uh, they spend a whole hour with their children and they still say, what kind of a mother am I? I should have spent two hours with them. Um, so self-disappointment, uh, disappointing self. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. I think the key word is what uh, John had brought in earlier. The, mm. the place the disappointment comes from is always because there's an expectation. Mm -hmm. Now, the expectations on ladies are come from many sources. They come from this, this expectation by the family, expectations by the society. We believe that there's also expectations by the church. We believe that women are held to a higher standard than men in the church. And so... And so we carry this weight of expectation and it can be very, very heavy. But you know, the, the, what, I, what I also tend to see a lot more of Pastor S is that people tend to think that so that I no longer get disappointed, then let me not have expectations anymore. Let me just mm. get in relationships, I expect nothing. Let me mm. go to this, I have no expectations, we have voted, we, I have no expectations about the outcome. I have no expectations about this, that, or the other. And that mm -hmm. way I will be sparing myself disappointment. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. Simply because I am saying I have no expectation does not mean that I don't have an expectation. Think about it. If I walk in, if I drove into a petrol station and I fueled, I have an expectation that they will put the fuel in their car and not put it, not give it to me in a jerry can. You know, my mm -hmm. opinion is, is, is not far-fetched. It really is a basic, you know. I have an expectation that if my, wi my, my window screen is dirty, they will clean it up for me. It's an expectation, and it is not an extremely out-of-this-world expectation. But when we mm -hmm. begin to say that I will have no expectation so that I don't mm -hmm. get disappointed, is that mm -hmm. we, are not, we are not being honest even to ourselves. By the mm -hmm. way, even the Lord asks us to go to him with an expectant heart. Mm -hmm. So if we go to the Lord yeah. and you're like, ah, God, we have no expectation. You can do what you want. You can answer my prayer. Mm -hmm. You cannot answer me. I have no expectation because I've been failed by men. It takes away the, 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 the requirement for you to come to God with an expectant mm -hmm. heart. So it mm -hmm. is important for us to actually have an, be clear. In, as I, in, I get mm -hmm. into this engagement, what is my expectation? Mm. And before yeah. we go too long on in, into this mm. conversation, Pastor S, I am mm. so proud of you that you actually did something about getting into the race in Makueni because it's mm. so easy for us to keep complaining and keep complaining, but mm. to even have thought about it and thrown your heart in the ring, mm. well done. And even though it didn't come to pass now, I am sure you have your wealth of, a, of, 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 of lessons to, that mm -hmm. you carry with you. But even now, even as you speak to pol the political body, you'll not mm -hmm. be speaking from theory. Mm -hmm. you know? and, 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 and they're going to have an expectation of you to have authentic conversations now going forward. That's right. Uh, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Moeni. I really appreciate that. Uh, and I like what you're saying. You cannot really live without expectations. And I think I've had that just to push in a little bit before I come to John Wales. I've had some ladies say, you know, I've been disappointed by men before. So I'm just going to get into a relationship. If, if, uh, the, if, they, if they surprise me positively, well, that's good. Um, 
if uh, they they do some things that I've seen before, uh, then it's okay. I'll probably not be disappointed. But is that even real? Would that even be a relationship? Then, mm-hmm. then, then, then why, why are you getting into a relationship? Mm-hmm. You have an expectation. <laughs> but if you if you if you don't have any expectations at all, then let's yeah. not even do this. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a flat relationship, as flat as a flat tire. Uh, nothing much to expect really out of it. Uh, I mean, we cannot live without expectations. Uh, it's part of us. It's part of who we are as human uh, humans. And uh, uh, because we have expectations, then we're going to be disappointed. Mm. John Wells, I, I think sometimes it's hard it hurts even deeper when we are disappointed by people closest to us. Uh, you mm. know, as pals, uh, it's very easy for me to be walking on the road and Moeni here steps on my toes and I say, ah, don't worry, ah, don't worry. Ah, I'm sure you didn't see my, my, where my foot was. Uh, but if my wife does that, I'll say, well, you've always known my foot is always here. So this is a plan. You know, you just want to kill me. Uh, <laughs> So it's going to be more painful because she's close to me. And sometimes that happens with family, with dad, with mom, uh, with spouse, with someone really close. They disappoint us because we thought they would read our minds. We thought that they knew better. We expected Mm -hmm. them to do better, but they don't. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I think uh, to build on uh, what Mwen he said, I think what expectation does, uh, expectation drives us towards uh, possibilities, Mm -hmm. uh, towards something good will happen. And uh, disappointment, when disappointment happens, um, one of the things is that uh, our perception always leans towards the worst uh, scenario Mm -hmm. uh, when possibilities are limited. Mm -hmm. And and so um, like, uh, like for me, I, I was disappointed um, when, uh, as, as a young boy, when my my father walked away uh, and uh, and he left us, um, and it was really hurtful. Actually, watching him walk away, those steps I still remember, uh, because at that point I felt so helpless, uh, and this someone who was my hero, so I'm not able to connect with him, and uh, mm-hmm. throughout my life. I think I expected an explanation uh, from him. <laughs> what made you walk away? And mm. so when um, when I met him after 14 years, uh, we met somewhere, sat and had a conversation. Uh, and I remember uh, that time I had done a few uh, a few sessions, and uh, I had re- I had read the book uh, That Is Destiny. And so my question to him was, uh, tell me about your father's story. Uh, and, and I felt so mature asking that question. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so he he narrated his experiences. And then I realized, actually, uh, he is repeating the same cycle. Mm-hmm. Because his, his father was, a, <laughs> my grandfather was a missionary. And so uh, he was not present. And then my father was not a missionary but he never saw a father who was present. Mm. And, and so here I am uh, a, facing uh, the same story. So what, how he did it is that he just picked a piece of paper, uh, wrote down, apologized uh, and uh, blessed me. And, and so having said that, I have met so many young people uh, mm. who go through the same. And I think uh, recently one of the greatest disappointment that a, a group of young boys had was um, mothers who were preventing them from seeing their father. Uh, because, that's a huge one. Uh, because the fathers walked away or um, the parents divorced or separated. Mm. Uh, and, and so he is a young man yearning, yearning to, to see his father, uh, mm. but there's no room to do, uh, to, 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 to do that. And uh, their, their parents who even go to the extent of saying that uh, he is dead, <laughs> but the mm. guy is not, uh, he's, mm. he's, uh, he's alive. And so mm. with that kind of uh, disappointment, what it does is um, mm. uh, this young man um, lives life 
seeking to gain approval in, in everything. And so some of them will experience uh, burnout at work uh, because mm -hmm. they are working very hard to gain approval. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, others, uh, they are working very hard to gain uh, acceptance, which now translates uh, to either marriage or even how we relate with our children, uh, just, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, just like my father. And so uh, you work so hard, uh, and as you mm -hmm. said about ladies, uh, maybe they have seen someone fail in their own family. And so when they are approaching their family and parenting, they mm -hmm. fear failing and they mm -hmm. fear someone repeating the same mistakes that they saw in their families. And mm -hmm. so there's a way actually disappointment can condition us to live life as though we are correcting everything. Mm -hmm. And so we need to enjoy the present and uh, we seek, we continually seek answers as we mm -hmm. seek to gain approval. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. And uh, the words as we come to you just to tell us, okay, we, we have been disappointed in life and uh, the way you keep smiling and laughing. Sometimes I wonder whether you've ever been massively disappointed, uh, Wagata. Uh, I'd love to hear your story if you have one. Uh, but uh, I would love to hear. So what happens when we get disappointed? What are some of the things that people you pray with uh, mm. in church and the youth? Uh, what are some reactions people uh, pick up when uh, or, or, or where? Uh, when they get disappointed. But before then, let me just say, Jennifer, Destiny, you're saying you're connecting from Kampala. Um, you're saying you're glad to be here and we are glad to have you from Kampala. Yeah. Uh, together with um, uh, Rutazana Doreen, uh, very regular in this show uh, mm. from Uganda as well. You're joining us, you're welcome. Uh, mm. Rogers Monene giving a shout out to John Wales. Uh, Lona Buya, uh, you're saying you're connected from Kakamega. Uh, we hope uh, that uh, there's uh, Unga there. Uh, we don't have much in Nairobi. Uh, then we have Ruth Kitonga, who is saying good topic, a daily thing, but mm. nothing hurts more than being disappointed by a person you thought would never hurt you. Uh, thanks, Ruth. And Frida, um, Alfred Cabrera, you're saying, yeah, you're in Nairobi, Kenya. Awesome discussion. We're glad to hear from all of you and others. Uh, please yeah. let us know more what, what you've gone through and yeah. how you have handled disappointment and uh, contribute to the discussion we ask. Uh, it works. Yeah, um, I think one, uh, I learned from my, my previous boss at one time, he said, the easiest way not to be frustrated, to be to be disappointed, is to lower your expectations. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, at, at least at least lower them, not not do away with them. <laughs> lower your expectations. You know, unfortunately, in this life, we we come in with such a grandiose picture of how it's going to be. You know, when I finish school, we have that grandiose picture, and then you realize finishing school is starting to work. And starting to work is starting to, you know, deal with deadlines and stuff like that. And so the high is not as high as we anticipated. And it creates a frustration when you, have, when you, are, when you come out with such a, a lofty picture in your head. And then you realize, yeah, it's just, it's just this. Uh, have I been disappointed? Yes, I have. Um, but I've, I, think, I think learning that Jesus even said, you know what, uh, do not trust, you do not put your trust in men, you know? Cast is he who puts the trust in men, the, the Bible says as well. And so mm. I've learned, you know, people can disappoint. Um, like John Will says, you know what, you have a father who decides him is taking off. You have a close friend who you think you're going to get married and then you get a reception, a wedding card. You know, you're being invited and if you can contribute, you know, and so you have all these opportunities to get frustrated. Mm -hmm. um, looking at how people cope, one is bitterness and the sense of vengefulness. And you've seen this, especially where, you know, um, a relationship has gone south and this person feels I was played by someone. And so they decide, mm -hmm. you know, it's a gender war from here on. I will, I will deal, you know, terribly with men or with women and I will get my way with them and walk away, you know, victorious. Um, and so you, you go into a, into a bitterness and revenge circuit. 
Another thing that happens is now just mistrust, total mistrust. You know, you're like, you know what? Nothing good can come out of, of men or come out of women. Nothing good can come out of politics, you know? And we're just like, you know what? Even, even as we are going to vote, and I know this was a big thing in Kenya, guys are like, you know, it's the same, same monkeys, <laughs> you know, different mm. for it. Uh, and so we, we kind of get to a place where there's apathy. And so mm. you have apathy towards relationship, you have apathy towards uh, the leadership of the nation, you have apathy towards church, you have apathy towards family, because all these fronts, you, you've gotten mm. wounded, treated, and then what does, it, what does it do? You close in and you become your own, your own point of reference. And so you no longer, mm. you can't trust the pastor, you can't trust the leader, you can't trust your boss, you can't trust your spouse. And you're just basically, you know, living on an island in the midst of people. Mm. And that causes you to go to the place where now you begin to develop your what 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 the council has called the negative coping mechanisms. You either get deep in drugs, alcohol, workaholism. You think work is going to be an outlet. So you find mm. this guy who celebrated in the office every day, but it's because the frustrations around him push mm. him into you know this place of trying to prove and affirm himself. Mm. You know, that's kind of what I've seen, mm -hmm. and of course. You know, just that throwing away your hands in the air and saying, you know mm -hmm. what, me and God, it's over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, or, or me and politics is over. And it, you know, it can, and I like what you're saying. I mean, the, we, 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 we develop certain emotions. Uh, disappointment mm -hmm. comes with um, uh, emotional reactions and, and we're emotional human beings. So we get sad because of what has happened. We get angry, frustrated. Mm -hmm. um, I was with politics uh, mm -hmm. because I expected certain things to work and then they didn't work. And I was probably not as disappointed as some people that I've met in this country have been disappointed mm -hmm. for those of you who are Kenyans. Um, and, and, and Moeni, you know, you can speak a little bit more into these emotions and just how to handle them. Uh, I met a lady who, I mean, just couldn't believe that, uh, you know, uh, one of the presidential candidates did not win because um, they thought this is it. You know, this guy has tried for a long time. This is it. We are praying. We are working hard. It's looking like it's working and just uh, it doesn't work. And I, I, I remember her telling me, I'm not even going to work this whole week and I'll never vote again. What's mm -hmm. the use? And she actually didn't go to work. And, and to her, it was uh, actually, uh, she was close to a state of depression uh, because we, we put our hope in this, you know, we, we, we see it coming, uh, we, we rehearse for the victory and, and then it doesn't happen. Um, you know, every time we lose something, something we considered precious, whether it was mm -hmm. something tangible or something we simply held in our heart, as mm -hmm. long as as long as we believed that we we wanted it and it was desirable and it was precious and we mm -hmm. held on to it and we mm -hmm. don't get it or we lose it because we had it at some point, <clears throat> we go mm -hmm. through grief. Grief yeah. is actually defined as the natural and normal reactions to loss. The emotions that arise as the normal and natural reaction to loss. And grief is also defined as um, the end of life as you have known it or, that, or as you had imagined it to be. Now, that means mm. that we encounter grief in very many areas in our lives today. We encounter mm. more often than not, Pastor S, is when, we, when I talk about being a grief specialist, Paul think, oh, you only help people when they've lost a loved one. But mm. there are at least 40 things that mm. impact the human heart and cause the human heart grief, just like just like death of a loved one, from yeah. losing, mm. losing a political seat. Because think about it. We think mm. about the expenditure on mm. running for a seat, the mm. emotional resources, the financial mm. resources, the energy. I, I mean, I, 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 for that reason, I have tremendous respect just looking at mm. people on campaign trail because mm. campaign trail is harsh. Mm. It, you physically, and you can mm. imagine if you have a campaign trail and you have four, st four stops, mm. at each mm. stop you must say something new. You can't repeat mm. your <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at all levels and then mm. in that police station and you and your wife voted in that station i mean how mm. do you expect that? Mm. 
Mm. You know, and, 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 and politics is one of those things mm. that has grief. We have mm. grief arising from, from, from a relationship coming to an end, a divorce, a separation. Mm. We will mm. grieve over that. When you transfer your children from one school to another, they're going mm. to grieve. But how many times do we actually want to find out, eh, hey, I'm going to transfer you and now you, mm. go to, you go to your school and you say farewell to the children? No, we don't think about that. I am your mother. I know better. I am moving mm. you to a better school. You know, I have bought the uniform. What do you mean mm. you have an opinion around it? But mm. then you see that now you, have a, you, you actually begin to, this child begins to live with grief. Mm. And, and, and there are many, many instances that we have grief. One of the, when I was studying this, one of the biggest ones mm. for me was to learn. Mm. You know, you have families that have two generations. You mm. have a person who's 18. And then the family gets another child. And those two children will never be able to relate to each other as siblings. They're going to, mm -hmm. to actually be grieving throughout mm -hmm. their life because siblings have a shared, ex shared childhood experiences. They won't mm -hmm. have that. My uncle is my brother. Mm. <laughs> you know, so this, this child is that a deputy mom, you know? So, mm -hmm. so, so you begin to see that in so many ways we are grieving. And mm. for that reason, I'm actually convinced that Kenya is a grieving nation. When you watch mm. news, we are grieving in so many ways, whether, whether it's the children dying or famine in this country, whether it's a fire in this place or another, there are mm. so many ways in which we are grieving and grief mm. does a couple of things to us. It yeah. distorts our reality. Mm. It distorts our view of ourselves. Mm. It distorts our view of the world and mm. it distorts our view of God. Wow. Now, once that happens, it means mm. that we are going to experience the world in a different way than it should have been. And we are going to find what Pastor Wags Pastor was talking about. We're going to find uh, short-term relief measures. And, and that, that actually begins to talk about even the things that we call addictions. Most of these mm. things that we even call mental health disorders, they are actually mental health responses to the mm. way life has been around us. And, and, mm. and so grief is really a big deal in our lives. And when grief is not handled well, we are, mm. we, are, we, are, we, are, we are stuck in, 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 um, in distorted realities. I, I like it. And that's a huge topic. Huh? That's a huge topic. We need to dedicate a day, one of these days, to talk about it, grief. And uh, we grief over different things. Um, so thank you for sharing that, how it distorts our reality in terms of the way we see ourselves, we see others, we see uh, the world, and we see God, right? Uh, so really powerful points there. Uh, but John Wills, uh, uh, I was talking with a little, uh, with a young boy. He's, he's like nine years old. And he was very disappointed because uh, he had, um, uh, his crush had moved on. And mm -hmm. um, he just didn't want to eat because I loved this girl. <laughs> he's, uh, uh, yeah, he's not even 10, but I loved this girl. How could she just do this to me? And he's wondering, should I cut myself? Should I bang my head against the wall? Uh, and I felt like we are raising a generation that knows a lot more about superstars in Hollywood than their neighborhood. And uh, they just have expectations that they're building castles in the air because of what they see on television. And little things just seem to get them very seriously. Oh, <laughs> that's uh, that's quite, quite interesting. Uh, I, I had one when I was, uh -huh. uh, when I was in class, uh, class three. Uh -huh. uh, and she transferred. I was so disappointed. <laughs> Her name was Jerry, but I got married to a Jerry, so uh, there was compensation there. <laughs> but, but 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 what happens is uh, for for that young mind and even for the adults, we base our judgment uh, on something we will understand. So the disappointment of this young person uh, it's simply because. Uh, we actually, our society, we are trained to, to avoid disappointment. Uh, and uh, we are not trained to have an encounter with disappointment uh, mm. and also processing and learning from disappointments. 
And that is why you'll, you will find an adult who is disappointed, but he will not talk about it at home with the mm -hmm. children or even um, with, the, with their spouse. So mm -hmm. currently, uh, there is no room for disappointment to be a source of possibilities for us mm -hmm. because we don't share our stories. Yeah. And um, for, for dreams, uh, we have, <laughs> we have uh, so many talks uh, about success stories. Uh, mm -hmm. This person did this, they succeeded. Uh, this person uh, had a startup uh, that mm -hmm. succeeded. But there are very few people who are sharing about their disappointments and their failures. Mm -hmm. And because we are trained to avoid disappointment, disappointment mm -hmm. to avoid pain and mm -hmm. to avoid failure, uh, we walk around with this scorecard uh, that I need to lift uh, as a way of, uh, uh, of celebrating my achievements. And yeah. for the young people in unrealistic dreams, um, those ones are there. And uh, I think also it's because of our value system, mm -hmm. uh, because the, the things that we perceive are important, uh, mm -hmm. they're actually not uh, as, uh, as important. And mm -hmm. uh, and we are we actually I find young people placing their lives uh, later on the wrong walls, uh, mm -hmm. where uh, the expectations are unrealistic. Uh, mm -hmm. They've had stories, and is what mm -hmm. they aspire. Um, and we are not saying that desiring is bad, but I think yeah. we need to get to a place where we share our stories and uh, and and. Um, mm -hmm. We, we, we share our experiences. But for that young man you mentioned about uh, eating <laughs> now, mm, mm. one of the things that, uh, <laughs> like now there's a certain candidate, uh, these elections, I was really, really hoping, uh, mm. a member of parliament that he gets it uh, and mm. even went campaigning for him, <laughs> uh, mm. but he lost. <laughs> so mm. uh, I was really mm. disappointed. Uh, and mm. what the disappointment does, it ushers in uh, fatigue, a mm -hmm. sense of exhaustion, uh, unexplained headaches, and you mm -hmm. feel like life life has no meaning mm -hmm. uh, simply because of the expectations that you had placed there. And I think for mm -hmm. parents uh, to identify disappointment in their children, one is uh, fatigue. Uh, this child is not able to wake up. Uh, mm -hmm. They are not as energetic facing life. And a sort of uh, lethargy. There is just no yes. no excitement about anything. Yes, yes. And, mm -hmm. and there's, there's exhaustion, uh, mm -hmm. and then they complain about headaches, uh, mm -hmm. stomach upsets. And then uh, sometimes I hear parents say, hey, mtoto wangu, kuna kahoma kana kujanga time. And most of the time that kahoma comes, either when mm -hmm. they are going to open, uh, uh, when they are opening schools, or when uh, they are sitting for their exams, or when mm -hmm. they are receiving their results in school. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. so I think it's important to have these conversations but also mm. for the parents to break it down uh, mm. to their sons and their daughters in a way that they can understand. Yeah, mm. excellent. Um, it works. I think I want us now to move us on to, there are these emotions that we get to deal with. And, and as men, we don't handle or allow ourselves to feel uh, as much. Huh? Uh, so sometimes we even jump over that and we say our tears are going inside that. Huh? Mm. Uh, that's where we, we feel nothing. But that's very unhealthy because, as we said, disappointment is a, a reality. Uh, but let's begin to talk about, so now what do you do when you find yourself? Um, when you, uh, and, and John was you were talking about these uh, campaigns. You know, you go everywhere. I mean, uh, we, we were going around campaigning and um, uh, the people are very excited to see you. So you imagine they'll be very excited to vote for you. Vote for you. Of course, when you have an experienced political eye, you can tell here it's not good and there it's uh, mm. uh, because it wasn't my first time. I could tell some things. But then we had these other three candidates. Uh, all of them were asking for the same seat. Huh? Uh, so, you know, only one of them will be given the vote, but each one of them would stand and say, will you guys vote for me? And they'll say, yeah. And the second one, will you vote for me? Yeah. And when the, the, uh, all of them are promised the three of them, they'll vote for <laughs> How is that going to happen? <laughs> uh, and so you, uh, I think life, life sometimes promises or seems to promise uh, a lot mm -hmm. of things. And then sometimes we misunderstand the Bible. Uh, it works because um, 
as I was being interviewed on TV in one of the stations the other day, they were saying, well, uh, if, if, if God invited you to take a journey into politics, uh, mm. surely you should have made it. Uh, otherwise, how are you telling us uh, God actually invited you into it? And it was mm. hard for me, for them to take it that, uh, you know, God inviting us to life or to an assignment uh, or to a certain relationship uh, doesn't mean it's immune of disappointment. Yes. Well, I'm telling you, uh, I, think, I think the believer in politics, the believer in ministry, uh, have been through a very rough, rough season. Eh? Um, and you can imagine also the disappointment of, of you knowing you've trusted God for something and not being able to get it because of the systems around it or because of just the, 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 the reality that it doesn't come on a silver platter. Mm. And I think we've preached a gospel that is one-sided. And today I was sharing in church and I said to them, you know, when, when we pray for somebody and they get healed, the next moment, John Wills, God is at work. Eh? <laughs> Facebook, IG, Twitter, everywhere, everywhere. I'm, I'm shouting about it. When you pray for somebody and they die, you don't even want to identify with the fact that you were there two hours before. You just like, you know, you know, you know? And so we, we find it hard to reconcile an all-powerful God, omniscient God, with the fact that sometimes he allows us to go through things. And being able to make peace with that will really help us to take a journey with the fellow believers and tell them, listen, Jesus himself said, in this world, you'll have many troubles, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Mm -hmm. Disappointments and frustrations are as present for the believers as they are for the non-believer. The difference between us is that we know where to go and cry. David says, I, I cry out to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. And he, he runs to him, you know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the difference between the believer and the non-believer is that we know where to run. Mm -hmm. We have a hiding place. But he yeah. like mtu. You know, mm. there's, a, there's a guy who has no point of reference with God who lost the election. There's a guy who mm. has committed to God as, as Pastor S and has also gone through the same. Both of them have to sit down and ask themselves, how do I cope with the grief, mm. with the disappointment, with the, with the backstabbing, with the, with the frustration with Kenyans? Na hiyo mambo yao kusema tuko pamoja, tuko pamoja, alafu wanakurushia kadi moja peke yake. Mm. They all have to be with the same stuff. Mm. But, and that is, that, when, when, when I think John Wills was speaking, I was just thinking, is it that disappointments were not there in previous generations or that mm. we, we had better coping mechanisms? Mm. Is it that we did not go through frustrations? You know, sometimes even in those schools of ours where you are taken to a boarding school and you know for sure if you leave that school, your father will crucify you. Mm. You, you stick it in there. Frustration, they know, being bullied, being punished, <laughs> whatever goes on, you stick with it. And you come out with, that's why you say, you know what, I have, I've earned my stripes. Mm. I've, 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 I've experienced, you know, me, I've been, I've been through the, I've been through the, the, the mud, I've, I've, mm. you know, I've climbed the ropes. And so when I stand here, I'm not speaking from a soft life. Mm. I've been through sleepless nights. I've been through you know, hunger, I've been, you know, like Paul says, shipwrecked, you know, all these mm. things have happened to me. And yet the problem I think we see a lot is that we don't know mm. how to handle mm. frustration. So is it that we are building people with a different material? Is it that we are throwing them too much too soon? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes the frustration I see with many young people is when a family breaks down, they are, they are anchor for dealing with frustrations and disappointments mm. in other fronts gets swept away and so we can say what we want to say you know we become miss independent mr independent but when a family breaks apart and see john will say you know what my dad walked away and i can still remember the footsteps mm -hmm. <laughs> i can still remember the pain and the frustration of that mm -hmm. but he was able to muffle it up now there's a generation that is coming up and the parents walk away and we don't even know then the mm -hmm. next day then there was a story even in the paper the other day of this girl who committed suicide Mm. Suicide, this, the, the accusation was the trigger, but mm. the problem for this, first, for this trigger came 10 years ago or five mm. years ago or two years ago, but just mm. found expression. Mm. 
So there's a sense mm. in which we, maybe we need to all go for boot camp as as mm. nation. Let's mm. go for boot camp and learn how to cope with the realities that will definitely hit at one point mm. or another. Mm. Because we are That's doing very so. in dealing with frustrations and disappointments. Mm. Mm. I hear you. And um, when some people can say, you know, we, we need to prepare to deal with these things. Huh? But some people feel like, well, uh, we need to accept reality, but we need to accept injustice. Do we need to accept less than uh, what we should ex uh, expect? And someone is still struggling with that issue they say here. Uh, if we have no expectations, does it mean we'll not be disappointed, uh, Frida? I think what we were saying is that you can't live without expectations. But if you lower sometimes your expectations, uh, then probably the heart is going to be less. Um, when I was talking to a lady who once was going through divorce and, and she mm. told me, you know, I can't imagine that my husband cheated on me. I, I, I said, well, then you don't think he's a human being because uh, it's not like uh, he, he should have done it. Uh, but every time you relate with a human being, you know anything. They are broken people and anything can happen. And you mm. shouldn't let what another person has chosen to do destroy your life. You have a life mm -hmm. to live. They have made their choice. Uh, you, you can't, I wish you couldn't work for a year. And I was trying to tell her, uh, you, you've got to realize uh, he's a good man, but he's a broken man. And they seen in, in his heart and uh, that uh, anybody could do anything uh, even when they didn't look like they could because they are broken and uh, we are sinners. It's only by God's grace that we live uh, to be who we are. Uh, so uh, there are many people who have gotten stuck with that grief and disappointment and hurt. And I think those are the ones we are talking to today and say, well, uh, there's a reality, there's a broken world, people are broken, not everyone is going to keep their promise, even the most well-intentioned. So help us know how to move forward. And as you do that, just to say, Mother Ngunza is going to hear from you, uh, from Mark Wenny there. Uh, Jennifer says, I think African societies handles disappointment and grief better because of a community and family support. Uh, it helps with the healing process. Um, when you could mention something on that as well. And she adds uh, also women uh, get to talk a lot more uh, about their disappointment, uh, unlike us men who get all macho and we don't want to talk about it and look like, you know, we just say it's a, it's, it's a little prick. It's nothing big. I think we see those movies where a man is shot and he says, ah, don't worry, it's a scratch. Uh, <laughs> the man is in hospital. Uh, so being able to express that. Uh, Mother says a great discussion here. Everyone in one time or the other is disappointed about things. Uh, yeah. that do not go as expected. Uh, we react to the situation, our response and coping is what matters. Uh, well, uh, those of you who have joined in, again, we have different programs that um, on our page, Transform Nations uh, are uh, put up. Uh, we just graduated men from Man Enough and there are a few people asking, we have our next class this coming week. Uh, Thursday evening and Saturday morning is when we launch our next class in case you're interested. Uh, just for today, I would uh, talk with you. But Moeni, we're talking about uh, good or positive coping. Uh, how do we deal with this? The grief, the hurt, uh, all these things. Uh, first of all, it's important to acknowledge the way in which we experience a grief. We experience mm. grief in, this, in six spheres. One, it, we experience it in our thinking. Our thoughts mm. get, get, get distorted as it were. We experience mm. it in our feeling. We begin mm. to feel things that we've not felt before. We begin to feel things differently. We interpret the things that we feel differently. Another mm. way that we experience grief is in our doing. You find that the things that you used to do are not giving you pleasure, are you not doing them anymore? You're unable to do them at all. And so mm. in our doing, we also experience grief. Physically, our bodies experience grief. When mm. we go through grief, there are certain things that will happen in our physical cells that we will, will more often than not, people are not able to put a finger on it, but it does happen in the physical, because what happens is that our cells 
uh, get get affected. The pH level gets this. Uh, uh, compromised and therefore that's why you find that even when people are grieving you find that they they, they you know what john wills talking about uh right. get Oklahoma. you'll find that when people are grieving it's very easy for them to just experience you know diseases too you know there, there's a yeah. word that my people say Naskiasi. you know i don't know how i'm feeling i'm just feeling something you know i'm just not okay because mm -hmm. i'm not there's it's lethargy you know, I just, I'm not feeling myself, mm. you know, we, you know, our, you know, your head is aching, your stomach, your, your digestion is, your stomach is constipated. Some people get, um, get diarrhea. Then you find people are, you, 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 you have a backache, you know, your skin becomes dull. Some people, their hair falls off. All these things are physical manifestations mm. of grief. Oh. And when you look at mm. someone when you look at it, it's always interesting to look at photos of people before and after. You will actually be able to see a difference. Some people even mm -hmm. become dull. You know, they actually look darker because of grief. Mm -hmm. And then spiritually, nothing mm -hmm. confuses Christians like grief. You know, mm -hmm. I prayed, I fasted, I did the Esther fast, I did the 21 days fast, I called three other people along, so it was not 21 days, it was 63 days, and and, and my loved one still died, you know, and, and mm -hmm. spiritually, you just feel like the relationship between me and God is now complicated. You know, we, what has happened, disappointment with God, and then now when you have people that have gone through losses, all coming together, you find that their interactions as a society becomes affected. So you'll mm -hmm. find one of the most uh, very visible ways in which Kenyan, Kenyans cope is by jokes. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are completely humorous. But underneath the Kenyan jokes is an insidious kind of thread. You know, mm -hmm. we are waiting to attack. You know, we are mm. waiting for a little thing that we are angry. So you begin to see that as a society, all this disappointment and all this being let down and all these things have made us actually become very, very uh, lethargic to the society. And we become withdrawn and we have, mm. we have changed. You know, we have really changed in the way we treat each other. Mm. And, and so mm. how then do we find uh, healthy coping mechanisms? Mm. The Thing that we we are we are usually told to do is accept. Now, yeah. acceptance does not mean oh I am so grateful I lost that seat. No, mm. acceptance is simply saying I lost the seat. It happened. So and so mm. has been sworn in. Mm. Yeah? Now we we usually have what we call the five stages of grief, and it's important to allow yourself to experience these five stages of grief. Now the challenge for many of us experiencing our emotions is very uncomfortable because mm. emotions make us feel vulnerable. Mm. No one wants to feel vulnerable. We all mm. want to feel like we are bodies, you know. Mm. And so mm. anything that is going to make us feel vulnerable. We want to quickly run away from. So we are drawn to vulnerability. We are drawn to a society that is going to have deep, authentic, and, and honest conversations, but we quickly mm. retreat in shame because then we are thinking, if they really know who I am, if they yeah. really hear what I am saying, if they mm. really know what I am about, they may not love me anymore. So we yeah. retreat into shame. And so we are afraid of vulnerability. Mm. But the place of vulnerability is actually truth and remember even mm. the word of god says truth sets free you know and and yeah. you know one of the things we one of the things that messes up our expectations is because we have expectations on titles if i say mm. he treated me like a father we mm. all have a certain impression of how his relationship with me was but if mm. someone who never had a father or whose father walked away and i say he treated me like a father begins to think oh even him he walked away you see mm. and so we all have expectations on titles and that mm. way is that it becomes very confusing yeah. now what we need to begin to do is actually get to a place of saying you know what Yes, she's my mother. And you know, this is a topic that many of us will not talk about. Eh? We mm. rarely talk about top mothers. We, mm. it, it is considered sacrilege, you know? Mm. But just to be able to say, you know what? She's my mother, but she mm. is not. Mm. She's my mm. mother, 
but this is who she actually is. Once mm. we begin to allow truth to come into yeah. that conversation, then mm. we begin to find that we will find acceptance. And once mm. we begin to find acceptance is that now we know how to operate now that we are, yeah. we are at, yeah. you know, she's my mother, but she's, and she's toxic. However, I am going to provide for her. Mm. I am going to take care of her. I may not mm. have any expectations of her because I know who mm. she is. But because I know who I am, then I am mm. going to do what it is that I am. So the first place yeah. is just accept. So accept it. Um, accept what you're feeling. Accept the reality of what has happened. Uh, face the truth. Uh, yes. because feel the, Allow yourself to feel the emotion. Mm. Allow mm. yourself to experience the emotion. Allow mm. yourself to to own the emotion, but don't mm. become the emotion, release yeah. the emotion. That's right, so that you but feel the emotion of anger, but you're not an angry person who is angry at everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't become uh, an anger bomb, you know? No. Uh, <laughs> All right, I, I know time has really gone, but uh, John Wales, each one of us is just going to say, as we encourage the people out there who are facing disappointment in life, in their closest of relationships, what do we do? How do we handle the emotions? How do we cope with it? Uh, how do we move on? John Wales. Um, I, I, I think one of the, especially for the, for the masculinity, uh, mm -hmm. for, for, the, for the men, um, and also for, for women and children, uh, because of unprocessed pain, uh, we live not to disappoint uh, at the expense of truth and justice, uh, even politically, uh, because I don't want to disappoint you. So I will tell you, accept and move on, uh, get over it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are not creating room for people to interrogate uh, mm -hmm. and process um, a, process the path towards uh, disappointment. And I think in a way of uh, dealing or rather addressing disappointment, one of the things that we need to ask ourselves is um, what is the meaning we have created around our expectations? Mm -hmm. Because the meaning that we have created around our expectations uh, is what actually determines the level of disappointment. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you will hear someone say, I feel frustrated, uh, mm -hmm. I feel this way, and I consider myself a failure. And, uh, and, and simply it's this person actually owning someone else's failure as mm. their own. Mm. Uh, and so it's, it is important to ask ourselves, what is that meaning that we have created around our expectations? And mm. once we ask, ourselves, we, ask, we ask ourselves that question, that determines our healing process. Uh, mm. And this uh, also requires having someone who, will, who is objective enough mm -hmm. to speak truth to your situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing I would say is that uh, feeling disappointed is not anything new. It mm -hmm. is actually the, a, when we sit and ask ourselves about the meaning and uh, what mm -hmm. it means to us, you'll be able mm -hmm. to identify how fighters come. And when I'm dealing uh, with people, especially organizations, like there's one organization uh, I was facilitating uh, reconciliation and uh, one of the days I asked people to bring their childhood uh, photos. Uh, and because when I went in, everyone was saying, we are okay, to Kosawa, <laughs> Hakuna mm -hmm. But now when they brought in their childhood photos and people were answering, uh, what, did, what does this mean to you? What was happening here? They were mm -hmm. able to bring about their stories uh, or, or to talk about their experiences. And they realized that most of the expectations and disappointments are actually rooted in their childhood. And so what happens is that we just graduate mm. uh, in, our, in our level of disappointment. Mm. And uh, I think the last thing I would say is we need to have a conversation where we interrogate our pain yeah. and where we interrogate uh, the places where we have sacrificed truth and justice. Mm. Uh, and we also need to interrogate um, our, our perceptions, how we mm. perceive ourselves how we perceive mm -hmm. our society, how we perceive our, our spirituality. Uh, and uh, I think one of the things where we get uh, a big challenge for our generation is that mm -hmm. young people ask why, and we didn't have a chance to ask our parents why. So we also mm -hmm. need to be able to answer that question. I don't know how to answer why. Interrogated yeah. by young people. <laughs> 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 like, like one of my yeah. friends said, uh, yeah. 
if I ever asked my my father why, Mimu who you are you. So, so I, yeah. I think it's good for us to to understand that um, a, this is the most informed generation, and uh, theirs is just trying to weigh options and to know what is true and what is not true. And for those working with young people, uh, allow them to interrogate even. Uh, our mm. perspectives uh, as, mm. uh, as adults, yeah. Yeah, so we need the conversations, right? Uh, mm. And I think several things have been coming up uh, as we come to you at Wagata and begin to close mm. down. Uh, we're talking about emotions that we need to face and uh, deal with and realize emotions are not wrong. They're just indications uh, and reactions to things which have happened, uh, but face them, not hide them. Yeah. and not allow them to take us sideways to other things. Uh, but also we need to change our thought patterns, as Moani was saying, that sometimes our thoughts get distorted about life, about self, and about other people. Uh, and then we have those beliefs. Uh, you know, we believe we are just, you can begin to beat yourself and believe that you're just mm -hmm. unfortunate, you're just unlucky in life. Uh, that you you just uh, are this and the other, you know, and you begin to beat yourself or believe something about other people, uh, and of course that takes you way further. Uh, but some words about just an encouragement for us to rise out of our ashes and begin to look up to the fire beyond. Mm. Wow, I think um, hearing all this that that uh, you guys have shared, I love the way you know Pastor Mweni always have this has this thing of she has six points. You know me, I'm like if if I say I have six points, most likely three only will show up at the end of it all. You know, and I'm going to answer answer my answer scheme um, yake. But one of the things I'd like to say is we are, we are dealing with a very different generation. I'd like to say mm. uh, if if we are to put it in pictures. We were a funnel generation. All the information came into a funnel, and then the, there was a little pipe that dripped only that which was right, only that which was true, only that which was was measured and tested. You know, your parents took you to places where they knew children are allowed. Now we are living in a in an in an aquarium generation, where everything is inside. You know, and truth is there, lies are there. You know, uh, our our young people are raised. You know they they are exposed to the to the extreme. They are, they they have seen more violent scenes. They have seen more sexual scenes. They have seen more corrupt scenes than we saw in our entire lifetime. And and they're experiencing the world in three D across the globe. As we had to fly to know what New York looks like. Some of these guys can walk through the New York streets because they have walked in New York in virtual spaces. You know, so they know the whole place. And so we are dealing with a generation that. The same way that they are able to walk in New York without leaving Nairobi, emotionally they have been exposed to every sort of in, of, of pressure that mm. even adults would not be allowed to. And so mm. for them now we have to distill them from that. And of course, they have also been exposed to information. You know, mm. guys like mm. you didn't exist. Pastor when it didn't exist years ago, who would sit down with a young person, nine year old, Pastor Simon, and talk about what are you going through? Your God had broken. There was no time for that. Uh, and so they have had to grow up. We think they are soft, but actually they are just, they, they, are, they have been dipped into the deep end. They are mm. swimming with the sharks, they are swimming with the, <laughs> with the jellyfish, they are, they are swimming with everything. And so we have mm. to be able to help them sift through what they are going through from all angles, emotionally, mm. intellectually, spiritually, socially, uh, uh, physically, all these things are hitting on them and we have to be able to take them and make sense of all these things mm. while they are going through them. Yeah. And that just calls for a very different, that's why I was asking, what was the difference between us facing disappointment 20 years ago and mm. this guy's disappointment now? As yeah. we were getting disappointed in, in doses, then mm. they are getting a full 360 massive experience in disappointment. And we need to think of how to handle such a generation. And of mm. course, the as well, who are having to deal with those emotions and those struggles mm. and mm. those feelings. And if yeah. we're able to crack that, I think we'll be steps ahead of where we are today. And I'm, I'm glad that I have some brilliant minds in this group who 
you know, are thinking 10x. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Um, I found another day, another kid uh, really disappointed because one of the superstars in uh, Hollywood had uh, broken up with a girlfriend. And I was just thinking that there are better things in this world to be <laughs> disappointed about. That's their life. But, yeah, but you see, that's their life right now. They, <laughs> they are following all of these guys and whatever happens to mm -hmm. them uh, could make someone not go to school. Uh, mm -hmm. The realities are huge for them. Uh, for us, we just knew the next village uh, and, and, and uh, yeah, not all of this. And we have said a lot of things, but unfortunately time is out. And I think we're going to continue these conversations uh, for the month in mm -hmm. from different directions. Uh, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to close with this scripture and then Moani, you could say a quick prayer for us. And um, especially for those from Kenya, uh, just about um, as we wait for the verdict of the Supreme Court tomorrow, whichever way mm -hmm. it goes, there are those who are going to get disappointed and just uh, praying that there's going to be a way that we can move on, handle mm -hmm. things well, not allow ourselves um, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to express our disappointment in ways that are not acceptable. Uh, but just really praying for us in the way that you can. And, and yes, John Wills, the scope of interaction for our children is just huge. Uh, so there's a lot. I think maybe in another two weeks, we'll just uh, look specifically as, uh, on how to help our children cope with disappointment, uh, because I think that's a big one. But let me read this verse, Philippians 4, 6, 7. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, uh, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, I, I think just from a, uh, a God, you know, our spiritual perspective, uh, the Bible invites us to whatever issues of disappointment and grief that we bring them to God in prayer with a good attitude of thanksgiving, looking at what is positive and, mm. and having a, an attitude of gratitude, uh, but then presenting our request to God and uh, expect from him that his peace, uh, which is beyond uh, what we can imagine, will guard our hearts and minds. And in the process, then anxiety was uh, seep away. Uh, so just pray for many people. Uh, it's a very difficult place right now where they feel nothing or feel very deeply uh, negative emotions and they are handling all of that and they don't know how to move on. So uh, pray that God would change our disappointments into his appointments. Mm. You know, someone has asked uh, in the in the chat, how do you deal with um, with being vulnerable? Because she says vulnerability gives me anxiety. And my question to you would be, lean in on that anxiety. Find out why does anxiety, why does vulnerability give you anxiety? Mm -hmm. Just a simple thing that we can begin to do is just to ask the question why. Mm -hmm. When you ask the question why, it allows us to go deeper. Why am I anxious over vulnerability? Why mm -hmm. does getting vulnerable make me anxious? As you go around it, you'll actually be able to find out that being anxious makes me feel like I, can, I have to rely on somebody or it makes me helpless. It brings to the fore my own helplessness. But let's not run away from who mm -hmm. we are. Let's not run away from allowing ourselves to feel. Uh, let's right. pray. Let's pray. Father Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you for this evening. Mm -hmm. We thank you for these conversations. We thank you because, Lord, they're not conversations that are abstract. They're not conversations that are going to leave us with a feeling of helplessness or with a feeling of ambiguity, Lord, because you give mm. us direction. You tell mm. us that in this world, we shall encounter tribulations, but be, be of good cheer for we have overcome. And Lord, we are reminded by the very thing that you modeled when, when Jesus mm. walked on earth. He mm. faced sorrows, he faced disappointment. Those mm. very people that he came to save crucified him mm. oh lord how poignant a reminder that nothing that we go through mm. did christ not go through he faced mm. rejection he faced physical pain 
He faced mm -hmm. heartbreak. He faced hunger, physical hunger. He faced all the things that we go through. He faced luck mm -hmm. in so many levels. Mm -hmm. And Lord, so when we go through those spaces, Father, we are not alone. We mm -hmm. have a God who understands, a God who knows exactly what it feels to mm -hmm. feel those things. And so Lord, we are encouraged, we are reassured, and we are affirmed that you are the good shepherd and in you we shall not lack. All the kind of resources that we need in our seasons of life, Father, they mm. are available to you, in you. Resources mm. material, resources emotional, resources social, resources spiritual. We mm. find them in you, the good shepherd. And so, Lord, even oh. tonight, as Kenyans, as we wait for the, for the Supreme Court ruling tomorrow, mm. Mm. Father, we want to come against anxiety. Lord, mm. your word tells us nothing good will you withhold. With you mm. not withhold for, for this country, Lord. Father, mm. if you withhold it, then it is not good for us. If you allow mm. it to come to Kenya, Lord, then mm. it is within your will. Because mm. your will and your plans for Kenya cannot be thwarted. Mm. But even as the ruling is made tomorrow, it will go either way. Mm. Lord, I pray that those that will feel the ruling has gone in their favor, would you give them grace mm. to celebrate mm. with, with, with grace, with mm. kindness, with mercy, with awareness that half the nation who voted are in mm. pain. And mm. even those that will feel that the Supreme Court ruling has not gone their way, Lord, would mm. you give them compassion to know that even in this season, even though their mm. candidate is not the president, Father, they mm. are still loved by you. That, mm. Father, you are still in control over the land of Kenya, and you are mm. still in control over the affairs of man. And that, mm. Lord, that we pray that justice may be done over and above everything else. Yeah. But yes, we well. also acknowledge that you mm. are a God of justice. We don't mm. look up to the Supreme Court, Lord. We look up mm. to you. Our mm. faith looks up to you, O Lamb mm. of Calvary. Mm. May your will be done in Kenya as it is in heaven. And so, Lord, mm. as we go to bed tonight, may we go to bed knowing that we are in your hands. Mm. That you hold us with the palm mm. of your hands. And yes, well. nothing good will you withhold from Kenya. Whatever mm. plans that you have for this land, Lord, they will not mm. be thwarted, neither by a Supreme Court ruling, nor by our, our candidate not being on the seat. Your plan mm. for Kenya stands because your plan mm. is unshakable, unchangeable, mm. and unchanging. Mm. And unto Amen. you, O oh Lord, we lift our eyes and place yes, our feet. O oh Lamb mm. of Calvary, we pray. Mm. Amen. 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 Wow, we needed to have gone for another one hour, but uh, yeah. lady and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. Uh, thank, thank you me. all of you that have joined us from Uganda, from Kenya, from other places. Uh, Soba Sunday continues next week, and we look forward to more vulnerable, authentic conversations. Uh, thank you very much, John Wills. Thank you, Moeni. I really appreciate your contribution. Thank you, Wagata. I guess now we can release you to go home. Uh, and uh, thank you everyone for just being there and for you contributing. So uh, watch this space. Uh, within the week, we're going to be telling you what the conversation is next week. But we continue with the theme when life happens. Uh, thanks, guys. Looking forward to having you as we continue. Uh, and thank you have too. yourselves, have yourselves you. a good evening. Thank you for having us. Asante Sara. Thank you.